Hello and welcome to Charlie's Desk. I've got another really cool piece of history for you today. On the desk is another uh, copy of the Matilda Ziegler magazine for the blind, but this one is really old. It's from 1930. It's pretty beat up. The pages uh, are sort of falling apart a little bit. It's all braille. It's on this sort of like brown paper that's maybe had some kind of uh, treatment to it a little bit. Like it's a, it's got a little smoother finished edge. Maybe it was slightly lacquered or something like that. So it lasts longer. As I flip through the pages, there's like mold spots and everything like that. Um, but I really wanted to get my hands on one of these earlier magazines so I could talk about the Matilda Ziegler magazine for the blind back in those days. It was started in 1907 and um, it lasted for more than a hundred years. Uh, it went out in of print in braille and then continued online for a number of years and uh, there is still uh, an E Matilda Ziegler foundation and that is devoted more to medical research. Um, so it's a little sad that the, the All Braille magazine no longer exists, but this is a really cool piece and um, it lets us dive into history. Um, I'm in the studio building today, so you might be able to hear some sweet drum solos in the background, but uh, let's just dig right in with a little bit of descriptions and then a little bit of history. I'm gonna zoom right in on the cover here because there's right away there's two different um, tactile fonts and they're and they're really cool um, so you have braille the magazine is from august 1930 so this is probably code one and a half braille which was used in the states at the time but probably so that um, the sighted folks who were maybe delivering it would know what it was the title and volume and a little bit more are printed in a linear font that looks like a uh, Boston line type, but it's not. Um, it isn't Philadelphia line either from what I can tell. It, it might be a, co a combination. Uh, it might be Philadelphia line um, because it's A, you know, it's not Boston line because there's capital letters. Boston line only had lowercase letters. So those capital letters kind of indicate a Philadelphia line. Um, the A's and the D's look like they are from Boston line type because they're more angular. Um, but the Y's and the G's and the U's and the S's look different. They look like they're from Philadelphia line, which was made by Napoleon Bonaparte Ness in Philadelphia, and he was from New Orleans too. So that's cool um, because actually the Matilda Ziegler magazine for the blind published in a whole bunch of different tactile fonts. And so I'm, I, I think it might just be worth diving into one of my fave books, The Unseen Minority by Franz Liszt Kostler. Really good book, A Social History of Blindness in the United States. You know, published in 1972, so it's, it's kind of out of date. But there's a little section where it talks about um, how many different tactile fonts it was produced in, which is just nuts. Okay, um, so I'll describe this, uh, yeah, the early years. Okay, so... The Ziegler's, meaning the Ziegler magazine's uh, early years, coincided with the period when the War of the Dots was in fever pitch. The editor took no sides. The magazine was issued in both Braille and New York Point, the two type styles having approximately equal readership at the time. Although Schools for the Blind stopped teaching New York Point in 1917, the Ziegler magazine continued to put out a point edition until 1963 for the benefit of the ever smaller numbers of readers whose fingers only knew this type of tactile print. So New York point, uh, it goes, you know, it's not taught anymore after 1970, uh, 1917. And then for 46 more years, the Matilda uh, Ziegler magazine keeps publishing in New York point. I mean, that's just so, so sweet. Um, and, but that's not it. In 1934, they put out a moon type edition um, in recognition, this book says, that many elderly readers no longer had enough fingertip sensitivity to distinguish dot cells, but could manage the larger and simpler linear outlines. And they kept that going until 1965. 
um, which is pretty remarkable. And uh, sort of in 1972, when this book was published, it was only um, appearing in Braille. But for many years, it produced, published in New York Point and Braille and Moon and um, yeah, I mean, that's a lot right there. So, but this one has uh, the title in, um, you know, this mixed linear type, which maybe has a little bit of Philadelphia line, a little bit of Boston line, because it's got those capital letters, and it looks like it has some of the lowercase letters taken from Philadelphia line, which is pretty cray. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll zoom out again, I'll zoom out again. So one thing I really wanted to discuss, oops, I knocked something over almost, is the dimensions. Like, I've had this question in my head, why is Braille paper 11 by 11 and a half? Because it doesn't really seem to, like, line up with your standard um, A4 uh, size, your international sized uh, paper standards. None of them really line up with um, 11 by 11 and a half. There's none there like double that. So uh, I'm trying to figure it out because it seems a little weird and it makes sense that you want that room for interpointing. And I know it, um, you know, you get your full sort of like 40 cells across, I think. Um, and that makes sense to me, but like, how did we come up with that? And so previously I had, uh, gotten my hands on a Matilda Ziegler magazine for the blind from 1984. And it's, it's much smaller than the one from 1930. Uh, the one from 1984 is 11, um, basically, yeah, 11 by 11, pretty much. And then the one from 1930 is uh, 13 and a half long. And then the pages are 12 inches high. Um, so that would, and it's folded over. So that would get you a piece of paper that is 12 inches high and 26, uh, about 26 inches long. And then you make a bunch of those and fold it over for the old magazine. Um, and what's really cool about these old sort of printing processes that they were using, they're using a braille stereotyper. So it's two metal plates that had been held together and then embossed through so that when you uh, smush these plates together around a piece of paper, um, you would get a full braille page. And because you were squeezing often in these uh, types of old tactile printing, old braille printing, around the edge, you can see a little line um, from the edge of the plate. Uh, you can see this in a lot of the block printing things and the old invitations that I've talked about where you even just see like little light impressions of a rectangle around each letter because literally back in the day, they were going letter by letter and putting together words and clamping it together and then smushing it <laughs> onto paper through a printing press. Um, and so aside from the letters and the braille, you might get... Um, impressions of the frames that are holding these together and so this is where it gets to be really interesting so um i looked for a page that maybe had a little bit more of a distinctive uh line um from the uh the plate right because i i was like oh this magazine is super influential it was really influential in free matter for the blind um, it was the largest like print operation for Braille in the States um, at the time. The AFB Experimental Workshop opened up um, in space that they rented from the Ziegler magazine. You know, it was a really big, big deal. Um, so, you know, in addition to that, I also think that the dimensions of the original uh, Braille uh, Ziegler Magazine for the Blind are what leave us today with, um, you know, that uh, 11 by 11 and a half, because when I go to measure that line, um, I get, yeah, it gets you exactly 11 by 11 and a half, which is remarkable. Um, so I was just like super happy to discover this um, and because it had just kind of been mysterious to me. Um, what else did Matilda, Matilda Ziegler magazine do? They really pushed forward interpointing because they wanted to provide as much uh, reading material to people as possible. 
Um, yeah, so the size of the printed area, I'll zoom out, is 11 and a half by 11. And then the size of the page around it is 13 um, by 12. So, um, you know, this is, you know, just one theory that like potentially the size of the super duper influential magazine uh, for the blind also um, brought us um, our standard size braille paper that we have today. So yeah, that's, that's my little thing. I could always keep going about these people in this particular magazine and what a big, huge difference um, it made. And also that her first name was Electa. So it's the Electa Matilda uh, Ziegler um, Foundation. And they're still active today, doing really wonderful things. And um, yeah, their endowment grew over time and they're distributing a lot of money and um, yeah, so this was a fun find for me. Thanks for, for watching and listening. And uh, yeah, I hope you have a great day and I'll catch you later. Bye.